Welcome to video 1A on the scientific notation. In this video, you're going to be able to correctly write numbers using scientific notation. And then we will perform calculations with being able to show our answer in scientific notation. So the only go vocab term we have is scientific notation. And so here we go, let's get started. Scientific notation is just a way to write numbers. And we typically use these for either really, 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 really big numbers or really, 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 really small numbers. So over here is your mole. We talked about this number in class the other day, 6.02 times 10 to the 23. This number represents the value of basically 6 billion times a trillion. And so instead of writing out 23 zeros or instead of going around saying 6 billion times a trillion all the time, we came up with a scientific method to show it in an easy and clear format. So up here on the right, you will see all kinds of numbers that were written in their scientific notation counterpart. You will notice a few similarities. All at all times, scientific notation will be written with just one number to the left of the decimal place. We will call that our M. And then there'll be the format of times 10 to some power. That exponential power is called our N. Now notice, if the number is larger than 1, 2,130 is greater than the value of 1, we would have a positive number as our exponential number. If it is less than 1, as you can see, 0 0.00075 is less than number 1, we would have a negative exponential number. And so as we begin writing these, those are the rules you want to follow of using one number to the left of the decimal and then using the exponential number positive if it's greater than one, negative if it's less than one. The only other aspect we have here is we consider the significant figures, which you are starting to learn, you're starting to get good at it, but the key idea here is that scientific notation only shows you the values that have significance. Or in other words, your scientific notation will only include significant figures. So let's go ahead and practice. Convert the number 56,000 kilometers into scientific notation. So first of all, I have to find out where my decimal is. And in this problem, it doesn't have one, so I would understand that there is a decimal right here at the very end. The reason it's not there is because it wants to show that these three zeros are not significant. They were not measured. But you and I know that there should be a decimal here, and now we're going to use that as our starting point, and we're going to move it one, two, three, four spots to the left. So then, I would now write 5.6 down because I moved it one spot to the left of the last whole number. And then I could write times 10 to the fourth power because that decimal got moved to the left. I also need to follow my kilometers unit and put that down here in my answer. And so again, we just moved the decimal to determine what the M was. My M was 5 and then I left all my significant numbers there. In this case, it's just 5.6. My N was determined by the number of spots I moved it. I moved it four. Since this number is bigger than one, it would be a positive value. So now it's your turn. Pause the video and see if you can correctly write the scientific notation for these three values. Move your decimal, write times 10 to that exponential number, and include all significant values. So as we can see here, this is how I would think through it myself. This is a thought process I would do with my own hand. I would start by finding the decimal. I would see that I'm going to move it one, two, three, four spots to 3.48. Since I moved it four spots to the left, it would be times 10 to the fourth, and I need to bring my unit of meters down. Again, I would go back and double check my sig figs. I have one, two, three sig figs here, so I need one, two, three sig figs here. The next problem we see is 0 0.000342. How would I do it? I would start with the decimal and I would move it to the right. One, two, three, four spots. Then I would write down that 3.42 3 times 10 to the negative fourth because I went to the right. I need to bring down my units of moles and then I would go back and double check my sig figs. One sig fig, one sig fig, one sig fig. One, two, three sig figs. Now again, you might have to go back and watch the video on significant figures, but the rules for sig figs are any non-zero digit is automatically significant, 
And then we have different rules in place for when zeros are significant and when they are not. One rule that you would use here is that if no decimal is present, any non or any zero to the right of a whole number would be not significant. The rule here would be if a decimal is present, any zeros to the left of a whole number would be not significant. Meaning these zeros are only there to show magnitude. So the good thing about sig figs and scientific notation is that they go back and forth. If you get really good at scientific notation, it will help answer the question on, hey, are these zeros significant or not? Because when you go to write this number out, you would see that these three zeros here are not significant. They are just placeholders. They just help show me the magnitude of the number. Now, as we go to our last problem here to practice, I would move my decimal over one spot to 9.83. I would write that times 10 to the one power of liters, get my units down there, and again, check my sig figs, one, two, three, one, two, three, we are good. So when we start to use um, calculations, we start to see this scientific notation showing back up again. And there are a few rules that you uh, can understand when we're adding subtracting. Now, again, in class or on the test, I am not going to have you uh, show your work and do this by hand. I will let you use a calculator. But this is a good way to understand what scientific notation is and also to help you make sure that when you put something in the calculator, you have a legit answer. You are not getting something with really crazy or weird exponential numbers. So the first thing we want to do is when we are adding subtracting without a calculator, we have to get our exponential number or our 10 to whatever power to be the same. Here you can see you started with the number 6.1 times 10 to the fourth, and you added that to 4.6 times 10 to the third. I have to get this times 10 to the third into a format where the exponential number lines up with the number I worked on before. Once I get those numbers to line up, I can easily just take 6.1, add that to 0.46 to get my answer, which is simple math, and we will see that the exponential numbers stays the same. Then, using order of significant figures, since this value is only precise to the 10th place, my answer can only be precise to the 10th place, so I have to round up to 6.6 .6 times 10 to the 4th kilograms. In a minute, I'll show you a problem like this on the calculator, but right now I want you to see that when you're adding numbers together, if their exponential, exponential number is the same, your answer should be the same as that. Now we look at multiplying and dividing. Here the idea is that if I am dividing or multiplying, the exponential numbers will be subtracted if it's being divided. If it's being multiplied, they would be added. So again, when multiplying, exponents are added. When dividing, your exponents are subtracted. So as I divide this value by this, I would see that after the division is done, I should expect to see the exponential numbers at 10 to the second power. Again, this is just a good way to help double check you that when you're doing work, that you get numbers that should be in the right ballpark. Uh, if I would have got 10 to the eighth here, then I know I put my calculator wrong. Or if I would have got 10 to some weird number like to the 15th, I would know I did it wrong. You should expect to see your answer around 10 to the second power because you subtracted the exponential numbers because you defined. Now let's practice this. Let me show you how I would do these problems on my calculator. So this is what it would look like. You have your problem here, and we go to put that into our calculator. I would simply take 3.56. And since we're using scientific notation, i got to locate the EE button. This is like telling the calculator to put a times 10 to some exponential number. And in this case, my exponential number would be 3. Now I go back and hit plus. You will notice that my calculator actually converted to a whole number for me. That is fine. That's okay. It's not a problem. That bother me because we're still doing the work. Now since I added, I'm going to type in 1 plus 2, 3, EE to the fourth power. And again, since I am adding, I expect this number to be in the times 10 to the fourth range because this would have gotten moved over. So when I hit my answer, I should expect that number to be in to the fourth exponential power. You can see my calculator went ahead and um, turned it into a whole number. So if you want, you can write that number down so we can practice putting it back in exponential number. 
But another secret on your calculator is it will allow you to switch it back to scientific notation by hitting the second button and then hitting Psi. So that is the correct answer you would have got with scientific notation, not considering sig figs yet. So again, here's the number and whole number. Just to practice, how would I move it over? One, two, three, four. So I go 1.5860 um, times 10 to the fourth kilograms. But now I have to consider my sig figs. Here, I was accurate. Once I moved it, it would have been accurate to the um, one thousandth place. Here, since I was already times in the fourth, I'm only accurate to the hundredth place. So my answer can only be precise in the hundredth spot. So the correct answer would have been one point five nine times ten to the fourth kilograms. The next problem when we consider doing multiplication or division. Here again, because I have some basic understanding of scientific notation, I know I'm going to subtract this 4 by negative 2. Since that's a negative 2, I expect my exponential number to be around 10 to the 6th power. So let's go ahead and put in the calculator and see what it looks like. 9.65. Again, I have to hit the EE button to put it to the 4th power. Now I'm going to hit divide 3.23 hit my exponential number, and then now I can't just hit 2, but I also have to hit this negative button here to turn that into the negative second power. Once I hit 0, it gave me the really long number. If I want to go ahead and clean that up to scientific notation, just hit that, and now it gave me all the numbers it calculated out, but to the 6th power, which is what I was expecting when I had 4 minus a negative 2, which would be a 6. So now to write out this number, I would write down the number 2.9876, and you could go as far as you want. But then we have to come back and consider sig figs. Here I had three sig figs. Here I had three sig figs. So rules of, the, of scientific figures is that whichever value was least precise, is how precise my answer could be. So since I have three here, three here, my answer would be the three. So one, two, three. I draw the line here so I know I am rounding. And now we would go to 2.99 times 10 to the six moles per liter. Again, this is a, a pretty uh, simple idea here. It just takes a little practice. But once you figure it out, it will be as easy as your ABCs. And we'll be using this again all year along with significant figures. So as we uh, conclude, couple quick reminders in case you uh, zoned out somewhere. Numbers are just simply written in this form of some whole number times 10 to the n power. M is a whole number, meaning it needs to be anything from 1.0000000 to the maximum that M could be would be 9.9999999999. The value of N is an exponent, and that is going to be positive if the number is greater than one, and it's gonna be negative if the number is less than one. And then when we go to do our calculations, that n can be the same if you are adding or subtracting, as long as those were the same when you started. When multiplying, you expect your n to either be added if you multiplied, or your n would be subtracted if you were dividing. I hope this gets you off to a good start. And there'll be more practice in your uh, lesson homeworks. Thank you.